Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. Well, we have Prakash Divan joining in now to uh, give us, you know, some updates on individual stocks and what he's making of the market so far. Uh, Prakash, hi, good morning. I wanted your thoughts first on HDFC Bank because, you know, there is large delivery buying that we're seeing in that stock. In fact, in the last two days, we've seen almost 3,000 crores of delivery buying in HDFC Bank. Uh, do you think that the bank nifty could lead the market higher now? And on HDFC Bank particularly, uh, you know, would you advise fresh money to be put to work? Good morning, Sonia. So, you know, logically, the bank nifty has to catch up with the nifty. There's no doubt. Uh, and, and it's been kind of last few days uh, building itself for that kind of an up move. And within that, if you see, you know, a couple of days back uh, in the trading session, HDFC Bank actually stood out uh, and contributed to the Nifty and the Bank Nifty's move as well. Now, what it tells you is, uh, and it, this is purely on the basis of the volume and the, the price volume data I'm talking about, because there hasn't been a big change in the fundamentals except for the last quarterly numbers that were shared. Uh, all the selling that uh, was imperative given its underperformance, relative underperformance to other banks and all, probably it's been done with. So what it means is that uh, you you won't have selling pressure if there's some sort of an up move in, within the banks. Uh, HCFC Bank will definitely participate in that uh, initially and then, and then subsequently because of its weightage, lead the charge as well. So I'm quite positive if somebody were to tactically put money into banks, uh, uh, you know, HCFC Bank definitely makes the cut now. Uh, given where it is in terms of the price and, and, and the uh, levels, the volume levels that we are seeing getting traded for sure. Mm. Uh, Prakash, hi, morning. Uh, you know, uh, Aurobindo Pharma, Ikta was just outlining those numbers. I don't know if you looked at it closely, but uh, any thoughts if you did? There are a few other pharma companies also which reported. Uh, good morning, uh, Prashant. So, yes, you know, I, I personally feel Aurobindo usually flatters to deceive. Uh, you know, you 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 had these multiple times. Things start looking very positive. There is there is a semblance of recovery. There is a semblance of salience actually uh, in some of the uh, uh, you know verticals. But what my concern has been that there are still a lot of unknowns that uh, I haven't been able to anticipate and which hit you quite hard in our times. Whereas if you have if you look at something like a smaller company like Orchard, you know, I mean, I know we don't normally talk about this given the fact that it's smaller. Uh, you you have far better uh, you know traction in terms of the business the underlying business trajectory going up. So I would I would rather allocate money to that. Some of the MNC pharma companies are looking very promising, and of course uh, if you if you analyze the overall numbers of pharma, they're far better than what other sectors have seen. You know from a percentage performance perspective. So if let's say you have hundred companies within pharma, eighty of them have done far better than the market averages. So that tells you that pharma as a sector will uh, definitely give you a lot of uh, returns. But I would be a bit picky uh, and then I'm not necessarily go for all of it at this point in time. Prakash, uh, you know, look at the top gaining sectors of last week, right? Uh, Friday to Friday, with, by the way, a holiday in between. The CPC index was up 6%. Uh, I was looking at all defense names, shipbuilders, BEL, BH, uh, you know, uh, BDL, HAL, between 25 and 35 percent in four sessions flat, basically. Uh, so PSUs, of course, is one has been very strong area, defense particularly there. The metals index last week was up 5 percent. PSU banks, 4 percent. You know, when one talks about what are the best way to position for, the, uh, for, for a favorable election verdict, you know, these are pretty much what come top of mind. Uh, but they've all done very well. Uh, uh, Prakash, so what, what, what is your sense on these spaces, near term? No, that's that's a real dilemma of sorts, uh, Prashant, because, you know, valuations are absolutely not comforting. And, and it's not a question of whether, you know, uh, what kind of a uh, government formation we are staring at next week. Uh, it's more to do with, you know, how much can these stocks rally from here? And, and that, of course, will depend on the underlying business. But if you look at you know, uh, some of these on a bottom-up basis. So, for instance, within the railway pack, while things have moved up very quickly, you have a company like Aircon, uh, which which is actually organically growing uh, far faster than what we had anticipated in the last couple of years. So, they've proven themselves to have done very well. They're going beyond the domain, railway domain, and, and doing things with defense as well. So, you know, you, you could look at these kind of businesses which are fairly secular in terms of what changes they do. And, you know, PSU banks, for instance, uh, while the rally has probably been a bit sharp in recent weeks, I think that the real catch-up 
in terms of the growth that you could get, especially the credit growth, and, and maybe in the second half, if there's a softness in the interest rates and the cost of deposit starts getting much more favorable for them, you still have a lot of them uh, with triggers that are positive. So Canada Bank, for instance, I keep talking about that. We saw six months back, Bank of Maharashtra looked expensive at one point in time, but the business change, and, and you know, uh, coupled with the environment that's kind of very conducive for PSUs, that's, that's what you need to kind of play on. But uh, Prashant, I just want to leave you with one thought that while PSUs have become expensive and, and could get more expensive this week, uh, you have some companies which post numbers didn't do as well uh, for, for reasons which are more stock specific or company specific. So LND was a point in case. We've, we've seen how it's kind of recovered from that when people realize that things are actually much better than what we thought. The same thing would happen to a Tata Motors. And why I'm saying that is, we, you look at the positive commentary that's going around with the Ashok Leyland, with the Maruti, with the MNM. But Tata Motors, just because of the cautionary uh, uh, commentary that we saw, there's, there's a little bit of a sell-off that happened and it's not yet participated uh, the way it could potentially do. So I, I, would, I would look at some of these things uh, from a six months to 12 months perspective to latch on to. You can't, you can't always, of course, time it perfectly, but uh, I would, I would not add more money into PSUs just because you know there's a rally expected uh, post the government formation. The budget would probably be the key milestone to watch now, uh, not not the election outcome in mind. Okay, all right, Prakash. Thanks a lot for joining and giving us a lot of fundamental analysis. Wishing you a good day ahead, and we'll touch base later in this week as well.